Welcome to Charlton Sports Weekly here at Anytime Fitness. I'm Glenn Hughes here with Stan Wilds. Um, got a little bit to talk about, not as much as usual, but um, recreation action. We've got, I know last Saturday or last week, yeah, I think it was last Saturday, uh, we had, I think the Hurricanes at the 7 and 8 won their game, while the Falcon team, I believe, they lost a close game. I can't remember exactly what the score was. Um, I believe the Steelers remained undefeated. They've got a pretty good squad yeah. there. There's some good kids on that team. Game I've seen them play, I think they uh, they probably held a team from Hilliard in negative yards. Right. So that's a good-looking group right there. Um, the Sharks went to Waycross the other night, and played Clinch County there, uh, came out on the short end, but I think, you know, they'll they'll be out in the long run. Like I said, you, the 11-12 bunch lost several kids to the middle school, so you still combine that bunch together, and it's going to be a good group too, I think. There's probably uh, some stadium jitters. Were y'all playing in the stadium? No, they play at the new uh, complex Oh, okay, out there. yeah, the Trembling Earth. Right. right. Um, well, I hope it wasn't the coach, any coaching that they called. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> any there. play calling. <laughs> I wasn't there, so I can't comment on that. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, this this week, uh, Saturday, here at uh, Indian Field, we've got uh, three seven and eight year old games. Um, I believe it's ten, eleven, and twelve. I believe it is. Uh, the time. Times, right, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the 11 and 12 year olds, I think they get a Saturday off. Got, got them a bye week, so. And then I believe the 9 and 10 year olds are going to Brantley, the Steelers. I believe they'll go to Brantley, so. That's pretty much all we've got for the recreation. Um, it's in full swing, though. Right. It's in full swing. It's a good crowd out there. Uh, the other day when I was out there, so um, get out there and support these rec kids. They like like a, a big crowd, too. That's it. Like I said, it's going to be football weather, I think, Saturday morning. Yeah. So. <laughs> Them kids that's going to Brantley better hope uh, that field dries up soon. Or that's right. They'll be playing in the swamp. <laughs> um, last week, uh, we talked about the Maidens at the time of the broadcast. We Knew they had lost their first game over in Seminole County, but we didn't know the results of the second game. Um, they had jumped out to a 2 nothing lead, and and that lead held on till about the fifth inning, I think. And I think Seminole scored one or two runs and whatever, but they ended up coming all the way back and beating us 3-2. to two, So that wrapped up the maiden season. Well, still, I believe it was... Wasn't it this year the best record in fast pitch? Right. They set, set a record for most wins. They won 18 games. I think the final record ended up being 18-13 and that one time. Yeah. And, and Made it out of the sub-region, I think, last year. Um, they got beat in sub-region. Right. Late. They got beat in the region crossover games right. last week, last year. And so, you know, first time ever making the state playoffs, so. You know, That's a successful season, I would say. I, you know, they did well. I'm hoping to, to hear from Coach Baxter sometime soon about possible all-region teams or whatever and, you know, kids we had that made the team because I know we've got several that are worthy of. Um, we got – there's there's probably three or four girls, you know, first or second team or so. Right. So, but like I said, that – Pretty much wraps up the Maidens edition until till next year. Um, you know, we'll have the middle school bunch. We'll be playing in the spring. And there's a few talented girls off of that bunch. Yep. So, you know, they had not played yet, but I'm pretty you – know, there's several of the girls that are that played some travel ball this summer. So, they'll be ready to go. Well, let's talk about the, uh, the middle school football here. Um the Braves, are, are they having some type of junior high playoff? Or? I'm not exactly sure what they're calling it, but I just know that they're, play, <clears throat> they're playing one of the Camden County schools. I don't know which one. Cause the only reason I know is because Richard sets up the officiating.
Uh, so, and he told me that they were playing one of the Camden County schools Tuesday at five o'clock here at Indian Field. So, you know, whether if they win that one, if they advance to play somebody else, I'm not, but. Um, so five o'clock Indian Field Tuesday. If you want to see the Braves, you know, possibly might be the last time win or lose. Like I said, I don't know. I just found this out not too long ago. So we we calling it on the fly. Here. That's right. <laughs> uh, the the B team football team they'll go to coffee tomorrow. So that might be a pretty big test for them yeah. right there. I think this is their last, uh, I think it's the last uh, JV game of the year also, isn't it? I think they got Brantley still, I believe. Oh, do they? I think right. next week or, uh, like I said, I think they went to Camden last week and they played their JV squad and it wasn't a pretty sight. But, no. You know, Camden's got all those they kids. They got a ninth grade team, a JV team. Right. Four varsity teams, so uh, yeah. it's hard to compete against those guys. But the important thing is those kids are getting yeah. getting playing time, getting experience, so you can't replace that. That's right. Uh, guess we'll go into yeah. the Indians here. Last week they played Telfair County, which we knew coming in wasn't going to be very strong and fairly easy game right. from the get go. Like I said we came out on top, 42 to nothing. Uh, like I said, it really wasn't real exciting to watch. You no. Know? <laughs> but, like I said, Donovan Bolden had a big game receiving. I'm glad to see him get the ball in his hands a little bit more. And I was happy to see that ball uh, going through the air, too. Right. Like with said, some zip on it. Like I said, Donovan caught five passes. Three of them went for touchdowns. Uh, 148 pretty big game season high i think isn't yeah, it? i'm pretty sure it is that may be the first time we've had a receiver all year ago over i yards. think it is yes we do good if we get 100 yards total i know <laughs> yeah, i know but uh i said trey hamilton he coach mag was on the sideline telling how many yards he got how many yards he got because as soon as he got to 100 taking he him took out. him out of the game so of course you know he's needs him this week didn't need no fluke injury happening to him so but he had 107 yards had a touchdown running also threw one of the touchdowns yeah. to donovan on uh, a nice pass yeah he kind of nice faked pass. everybody out yeah <laughs> almost a tim tebow like <laughs> faking the run and then throw it over him but kid we saw at quarterback who hadn't had a whole lot of varsity experience but he came in and did a good job as a uh, trey harrington number he 15. did I was uh I was really impressed with uh Trey Harrington. Um I hope we see a lot of him come Friday night. Right. Um, Trey's a good athlete. Um I wish, you know, I don't know if we, if we're going to have a two-headed quarterback uh situation here. It was actually three-headed. Yeah, three-headed <laughs> with Trey, but um I would have liked to have seen that a little earlier in the season. Right. Yeah, I guess Coach uh, Mack seen enough of him in practice that he's developed enough that yeah. he felt confident. In it. Like I said, he passed for 104 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, and beautiful. I think it was 60-something yards yeah. to Donovan. On I mean, a rope. He, on a rope, aired it out. Um, so, a um, few other kids that scored, I think, for the first time this year and first time in their careers, I believe. Uh, yeah. Shavante Gilliard playing fullback, scored on a one-yard run, and then uh, Gage Boyd. Yeah. He came in and ran hard. He know. did at the end of the game, and, that, and you know, I'll, I'll give it a tell. They didn't have many kids, so a lot of their starters were still in there, right. I think. Um, but uh, I believe it was a, um, a counter play. He got about 30 yards about on 30 and then, yards, yeah. Um, then he got a one-yard plunge, uh, 
I was kind of hoping to play before that that right old Doug it. Malin would have got in on yeah, that he pass. Caught a little short pass, and I think yeah. he ended up about that far short yeah. of the goal line. And he was fighting for it, though. He was fighting. And for Gage it. came in and stole his glory. Yeah. <laughs> but all, yeah. you know, I believe that's the first catch Doug's had in his I career. I think so. so that was I think good so. To see. Yeah. And Doug's one of those kids. He's been there. I believe every year and uh um, four years right? he plays special teams um and uh and he contributes where he can that's you it. know and he's a team player so that's why I was hoping uh he would get in on that uh <clears throat> defensively we had a few uh will Gowan was the leader he had five tackles and a sack uh Cody Wilds Tim Westcott and had four tackles apiece. I didn't want much getting through that front line. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's good when your three leading tacklers are your defensive, defensive linemen. Line. Uh, that'll tell you nobody's getting by. So they, uh, they play all three of those guys. Uh, the, even in the Telfair County game, I think our defensive line, and, and probably all year, I think that as a unit, um, the defensive line is, our defense goes with that defensive line. Right. Um, every game, and we, I, I'll go all the way back, um, you know, Brantley, their, uh, I mean, their offensive line wasn't that athletic and, and wasn't that big, so we kind of bullied them, but the following game at Bradwell, um, we, uh, they have, uh, um, they had some big kids. They one faced of, a monster yeah, in that game. One of those guys, the guy that Cody faced all night, it was a UGA commit. Right. And uh, that's a mowing kid. Yeah. Um, but he had an everyday normal name. I can't Chester. remember. Chester. Yeah, Chester Brown. Yeah, Chester Brown. <laughs> but uh, um, those guys, they had a couple, three, maybe three 300-pounders, and our defensive linemen, I think Cody was the leading tackler in that game, and Tim was second in tackles. So like said, we they, held our own on the line all year. Like I said, a few other defensive. Uh, Brent Wilds, your son, he had a interception and a fumble recovery yep. in the game. So. And dropped another interception. Right, and we let him know about that in the locker room afterwards, uh-huh. too. But also, uh, Donovan Bolden picked off a pass. So. But we was talking about the defense on the year. Well, Again, the Telfair game, they held them to 53 total yards. All of them was on the ground. They had no no, no passing, passing yards whatsoever. But on the year, rushing-wise, we've given up only 55 yards a game on the ground. And that's through uh, eight games eight so games. far. So that's, uh, that's 440 yards, Roughly, give yeah. or take a few, on the season. That is, I, That would have to be... The best, if not the best, one of the top two or three, uh, going back to 1990. Right. Um, I would venture to say that if they continue that pace, that would be the number one run defense. That's awesome. Well, giving up just about 100 yards passing a game. Of course, the Wilcox game kind of inflated those stats. Yeah. But. Um, but then again, we knew that Wilcox was going to get some passing. Yards. That's right. I think even the coaches knew that. Whether we won or lost that game, um, anytime you throw five wide receivers out there, <laughs> you're going to get some passing yards. But either way, you know, 155 total yards a game for your defense. That's, you know, I'll take that. Anytime. I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, you know, it, it only takes two or three big plays, and they, you know, on the defense, and by big plays, I'm talking about 30 yards or more, right. and you're at 100 yards almost. That's it. So 155 yards over four quarters is uh, that's awesome. That's it. Um, ain't nobody gonna ain't nobody gonna rout us. That's for sure with that defense. I hope have. not. But anyways, um, I don't know. Do we want to take a break right here and come back and talk about this week's game and? Yeah, we'll we'll come back and uh, and talk about the Bacon County game and uh, and do some some region picks and maybe some college picks. All right, wrap well. things up. All right, then we'll be right back then. <laughs> 